uh, yen pairs today quite largely. And the reason being is because so many people are trading them at the moment, I'd imagine. You can see, if you look at practically any of them, they're all pulling down, which gives a lot of opportunity and it opens the door for a lot of understanding and lessons within FX markets. Okay, you know, there's a lot of people who will just post and just do, you know, hype posts more or less. They don't really care about the actual strategy, they just want the views, I guess, and the adulation. But nonetheless, I like to focus on what's real and what is important. So if you go on my profile for that reason, go on my profile, go on my streams, my videos, I said to you that there's a good chance you're going to fall from this level once you reach it again. You've now found that you're on week two, the down week. Now why does this happen? Okay, I'll tell you why. It's because there's a high price and clearly short. Okay, now by clearly short, I don't mean that you sell it with the assumption it's definitely going to fall. I'm saying this as in people who are the smart money or the larger money in the market use reference points like this. And they're absolutely clear, they're absolutely unequivocally clear that they should not be buying things like this because the price simply is high. Okay, that's, that is just factual. So what happens is when the price comes back to the same area, guess what they do? They short again. Okay, and you've got the choice to either be buying into their shorts or shorting with them. Okay, you can't beat them, join them, as they say. So the reason why you've fallen from here likely is because that reference point for shorts has come through. It's come through into the market and it's delivered that fall. Now, as I say as well, a lot of the time, the price it's always caught up by the MAs. You, you generally, no matter what you're trading, unless it's something that, you know, like a global economy of severe inflation that has an everlasting up move. Apart from that, on stable economies or stable assets rather, no matter what it is, your moving averages act like a magnet. They suck price in. And it happens over and over and over again. You can see that there's never a time on the dollar yen where you don't come back to your moving averages. So you've got to rest in the knowledge that ultimately you are going to get back to at least your 20 MA and ultimately your 40, your 100 and 200. It's just a fact, okay? That is just factual information. That is what happens in markets. You can't deny that. It's obvious as I'm showing you. So bear that in mind. Now, with this as well, if you look on the daily, you've seen four candles straight down. It looks very forceful. You are coming into an area of key weekly support, okay, key daily support. Really, really interesting um, point here as well is that your two hundred, your hundred MA, sorry, is is coming down in line with that level of support. And if you flick to your weekly, your twenty MA is always there. Now, if you've got no idea why that's beneficial you probably need to come on board my academy. You can do so by going underneath this video. It's absolutely free. Don't forget to press the like. If you're just coming in, I can see people are coming in now. So you've got key, uh, key tech zones on your weekly. You've got key tech zones on your daily. Okay, you're coming to key moving averages. So as you come down here, I would expect to start to, uh, the market to start to tremble a bit. And it gives you a chance to start to scale into the long side carefully. And I say carefully because if it does continue lower, you, know, you don't want to be overexposed. It is still very early on in this overall up move. If you look at the trough to the peak and you draw a fib level, you're not even 23.6 down. Okay, You haven't even got your 23.6 fib, so it's obviously still fairly high as a price. Okay, So you've really got to be careful with that because... As you start to fall, you're going to want to be on the safer side, especially that early on in a pullback from a long-term uptrend, which of course you've seen from this date here. Start of the year, it's gone up and up and up. So you would expect something significant ultimately. Okay? Again, if you look where I've just drawn this red arrow, it's absolutely no shock whatsoever that you just happen to come in line 
with this over here. And again, it comes to the same thing. Traders who are making money or who are make up the larger money in the market know that is a short. They know there's price rejection. They know it's ideal to scale into the market short. So it's exactly what they do. And of course, you get this big market fall back to your key moving averages, like I said, because the price um, retraces and always comes back. And uh, you get a continuation on. If it does uh, come that you continue again, then it wouldn't entirely shock me. But your job is only to trade the market and only to trade it at this time. What can you see now? Don't worry about whether it's going to beat the high or keep going down. Don't worry about that. Just attain market value by getting long at the right time. That comes in line with areas of natural higher probability. In other words, where the market is more likely to bounce. Okay, so you can see key moving averages, key support. It's a good tech zone for me. And I will, I've already started to scale in long. I may add further. Um, you could probably do so lower as well here because you've got another area of key, uh, key support and price rejection. Remember, you're never going to pick the best price every single time. That's why I teach people to DCA. Because if you were a magician and you could do that, great. But it's just not attainable. It's not really reality. You can't buy and the price goes where you want every single time. So you buy into that. It's, it's false. So you can buy as prices fall. You have to, you know what? I had something really important as well. I had a comment. Um, I won't say who it's from, um, but I don't know if it was an automated bot or not. Some of them are on here, unfortunately. But he said, are you sure about this? The mar I mean, it wasn't in the context of this market, but it has the same effect. He said, are you sure about this? The market is pushing up and up and up. Are you sure you want to sell it? And it was also, um, we're going to need a negative catalyst to drop the market. Now, both of those statements are true. But how are you ever going to make money shorting after the news has come out? You, you can't. You've got to short before the market falls and you have to buy before it rises. That is the only way to make money. OK, you have to buy once you have you know, got to a point where you've got a low price. And then when the sentiment changes, it will take you the way you need to go. But it just baffles me because I've had that comment many times. You know, are you sure you want to get short? The price is high, basically, is what they're saying. Are you sure you want to buy? The price is really low. It just makes absolutely no sense in any form with that kind of question. Like I said, whether it's a bot or not, I don't know. But it's just for anyone who's sitting here saying, you know, when we got up here, who, who were saying, do you really want to short? The price is really high. Do you want to short? Yes, absolutely I'd want to short. I mean, the reason why people lose so much money trading is they don't get that basic principle that you have to sell high and buy low to make money. They don't get it. And it, it, that is what makes things work. With that is full risk management plans and everything that gels it together. But on a fundamental basis, buy low, sell high. That's how you make money. OK, so don't be one of those guys who looks at the market coming up and says, wow, do I really want to sell? The price is astronomically high. Do I want to sell? Did you have the same thought there when the price was astronomically high and you didn't want to sell? And then suddenly what happens? 151 or 152 to 127 in one swoop. Then you would have got to here and said, wow, the price is falling so low. Do you really want to buy? There's no positive sentiment yet. Do you really want to buy? And then the positive sentiment comes in. And the price rallies. and You've missed it again. So, you know, to make money trading, it's all about buying low, selling high. You can't do it any other way because you're never going to attain natural market value unless you follow that. Unless you follow that trajectory, you cannot get there. OK, now there's tons of people coming in. If you can press the like button, that'd be fantastic. I'm going to move on to another yen pair. I'm going to do the Swiss yen. So Swiss yen in the same way, although you've really got a double whammy with the Swiss yen. And the reason why is because not only is the yen lost value against so many currencies, the Swiss franc has also gained value at the very same time and against various currencies. Okay, that's why you've got your old Swiss going down, your CAD Swiss going down, your dollar Swiss. That's why all your Swiss pairs, when you've got the Swiss on the right-hand side, essentially, um, it, 
you know, the Swiss franc is gaining value, is basically what I'm saying. So um, if that confuses anyone, what I mean just very quickly is this. Swiss franc is on the right of the currency pair. Okay, the ord is obviously the base dominant, and therefore you get this, right? Ord losing value, Swiss franc gaining value. Okay, if you go to your CAD Swiss, same thing. Go to your US Swiss, same thing. Okay, you get the picture. The Swiss franc's gaining value, that's why the currency on the left of the pair is dropping. Okay, so given you've got this massive strength in the Swiss franc and this massive weakness in the yen, Okay, which is why they're all rallying, you get something incredible, 60% straight up, basically. Again, you've got to come back to these moving averages. It never doesn't happen. In, within stable economies, stable assets, you will always return to them. So getting further and further away from them okay, has to spark something in your brain. Again, you don't want to be one of those people who says it's going up and up and up. Do you really want to sell? There's no negative sentiment to bring it down. Do you really want to sell? Well, when the negative sentiment does come round, inevitably, and we do get back to these MAs, inevitably, based on forever, based on everything you've seen forever in the past, you would surmise that that's a good approach. I mean, I would at least. There's no alternative. What else are you going to do? Um... So you've got to uh, be aware of that. I've had a good question there, Matthew Rail 64 I've not seen you before, so welcome. Um, hi, how do you screen stops or FX by their distance above a blue O? I don't screen them in the sense, in that way. Basically, I, I well, within my method, okay, which I teach people, like I said, um, we do multi time frame analysis. So you open up every asset, every day, or all the assets you're trading, and you go through them individually, because your moving averages are always going to be above or below in different amounts based on your time frames. You could have them above on the monthly, below on the five minute. So you can't specifically screen them for that reason. Um, the easiest way to do that is to look at their percent change on the day. Obviously, if they just dropped, you'll be able to tell that they're probably below average on um, their lower time frames. Hence, you would look for uh, low prices to buy if you looked at them over a longer period of time of course then you can judge where the ma's would be on your higher time frames essentially but that is an 150 video series where i teach people remember guys if you're not on board already i've got a black friday offer going at the moment it's considerably cheaper it's probably the best deal i've ever put out so like i said the free training is underneath this video if you're interested in that you want to learn go underneath okay it's just right here just say it and then I'll get back to what I was doing. If you're watching on YouTube, it's under the uh, video there. Otherwise, it's just there underneath. Okay, do with that as you will. So, back to the good stuff. Swiss yen. Okay, you're peeling back. Um, it's a lot stronger to the upside than other yen pairs, really. I would say probably the reason why is because, like I said, you've got the double whammy. You've got strong Swiss and ultra weak yen. Uh, but you are coming to early support, and like I said, um, along with that early MA. So I wouldn't be shocked if you start to stumble. This is a really good place to really scale in very minor longs, okay, on, on this four-day pool. If you had it short, take it for gains, okay? It's, it's very much ideal, uh, especially as you're coming to your first level of key support. Don't think you're going to smash through it immediately. If you do, you'll probably find yourself near 164. But inevitably, the same principle, you cannot be buying these highs and you can't be saying, oh, I'm not going to sell it because the price is high. It's just lunacy. It's lunacy. You have to be short at high prices. You've got to buy at low prices. That is the only way to make money. You know, like I said, it's not debate. That is not negotiable. Look at the charts. If you don't believe me, look at this. It shows you. Buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high. What happens there? It's short. What happens there? It comes down. What happens there? Okay, continually, it's short. It falls at highs and it comes back to key moving averages. Okay? So you've really got to understand that you're only going to catch shorts on positive sentiment. You're really going to catch short moves after the move up, 
right? Not after the move down. Um, so just be really, really um, careful with that, okay? So that is your Swiss yen. I did a pound yen video yesterday. I think I might have saved it and uploaded it to YouTube, I'm not sure. It's a lot more contentious very early on with your pound yen. Okay, you can see that all around here. Okay, I think you'll stumble as well there. I think you'll trickle slightly lower 184. I think across the board, a lot of these uh, yen pairs will probably have the same feet in that sense. If you drop to lower time frames, you can see that each candle has had candle whip, so it's obviously stumbling, hitting another level, push up on lower time frames. You've got an amalgamation of key moving averages, ideal support. I would say across the board, it's you know, it may be ideal to start the scale in long there, slightly lower. So I think you've got a bit of room on everything. Dollar yen, Swiss yen, pound yen. They move similarly because they're all based on the yen. But, of course, I'm big on risk management. Anyone who's in my academy learns from me and has, has taken things seriously and is probably getting results. Um, if they're trading a basket, okay, if they're trading the pound yen, dollar yen, they'll, they'll be conservative on their entries based on everything they're trading. You cannot just say, oh, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to buy CAD yen, pound yen, or yen, euro yen, Swiss yen, I'm going to buy all of them at the same time. Because remember, if you do that, your risk is going up by another factor every single time. Given that their price action or price movement is similar, at this current point in time especially, you know, one move is essentially six moves. So you've got to be careful. If you're going to trade them, I wouldn't smash in and trade as many yen pairs oh this is great as you can okay because if it turns out that you don't happen to balance them early on and you get down here is your exposure going to be sustainable given that it's likely you will return to this 40 ma or indeed this 100 ma at this key level of support ultimately some point in the future you're going to find okay that it's unsustainable for you if the sentiment turns dramatically and you're buying high because yes i think it's a long but just remember what kind of long is it you've hardly come down okay you've got a long way to go potentially potentially you didn't at this point yes that's true but you've potentially got a lot longer to go so buying large amounts of all the same thing is just going to put your risk up by continual factors you've got to be so careful with that um cad yen i also did a big video on i called it short up here i i labeled it why do um and i might put a few of these in the chat i labeled it why do uh institutions short at 100 percent retracement that was a 100 percent retracement and it's the ultimate price the reason why they do it and also this is really important if you look at the top just notice how this candle wick here comes above this blue line, okay? So what does that mean? Well, essentially it means that if you're someone who's putting an order in and you want the absolute best price, you might do it slightly, just a tiny bit above this previous height. And the reason why institutional traders do that with larger volumes is because their size is so large that when it moves the market, They've got, they've got ground to cover up, basically. So if they short slightly higher than the previous high, okay, they're giving themselves headroom. That's why you get market maker stops. Okay? In other words, people put their stop loss there and they get wiped out. Okay? And then the price falls. That's why I don't use stop losses. That's why I diversify with small sizes across a, a larger portfolio. Okay? It's far more sustainable than guessing where and when to be out the other side in my opinion that's just how i do things that's what i teach people and it seems to have great results so your cad yen you've fallen again you're again like other assets you're almost at key price action levels to the long side but only light ones okay if you look at the long-term market your trajectory is up i wouldn't be entirely shocked if you do get through this i mean you've found you've hit over here once, twice, thrice, okay, four times. Ultimately, in the future, you may see higher. But if you do drip lower, 
again, it's likely you're going to come nearer these key moving averages over time. Someone said, I don't trade currency but stocks and use the MAs plus VWAP on free time frames, 30 minute, one day, one week. Crossing clues to find the trends. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, that's good. It works for you. It's not particularly something I do. I use all time frames, every single one, apart from the one minute a lot of the time. Um, I'm not particularly looking to find trends. I don't think trends are something you have to find. I mean, you can just tell by looking at this, for example. This is trending sideways, okay, from this point. Um, if you look at the longer term market, you simply put your time frames up, okay. It's it's up trending over time, okay. So that's how you find trends, in my opinion. I don't. I'm not. I'm not using the MAs to find the trend because the trend is visible to me already. If I put my monthly, that's clearly a long term uptrend. If I put my one hour, it's clearly downtrending now. So it doesn't require much inference. The reason why I use MAs is because it allows me to judge how high or low price is and how good my, my long or short is likely to be for that reason. So one that a lot of people are interested in, okay, and again, you've got four days down move to your earliest moving average. I think this is probably gonna provide uh, your first key level of support and ultimately a uh, early bounce okay if it doesn't it doesn't matter because your size is light like i said it's not the time to be saying wow the price is amazing because it's not it's not amazing right it was amazing much lower down there or down here if you take your whole fib you go on your monthly you're like six percent of the way down Okay, ultimately, it's very fair to say you will pull all this way to your MA, like I said, because throughout history, you always return. Okay, and I'm saying that over and over again, because it gives you an idea of how far the price can easily move back, just like it has in the past so many times. I mean, if you don't believe me again, you don't have to. You don't have to believe me because it shows you. Just believe the market. I mean, that's the basis I give a lot of people. If they, if they, if they dispute what I'm saying, I just refer them to what's happened in the past, because the only thing we can both agree on is what we can see, because it's undebatable, isn't it? Okay, it's either yes or no. It's not an opinion. It's either the price falls at high prices, or the price tends to fall at low prices. Okay, so. That is obviously all time frame dependent, so um, just be very careful with that. Um, so here you go. So again, I think you've got a little bit of room. I think you'll get to these early MAs, and I think it'll provide a bounce. If you're going to trade it, I'll do it very lightly. If you're risk averse, you know, you've got much larger support here, much stronger concrete floor. You've got your 40 MA. So I would say it's a much more key level this point one five nine um two okay so euro yen if you prefer trading it it turns out a lot of people do um uh, i don't think many people post about it really but um you know a lot of people ask me about this that really is going to provide your first area where you might have trouble if it's to fall but ultimately, I think over time it will. Sometimes it's just going to take a bit of time to break through all support levels to the downside. Okay, and that's why moving averages are dependent on the time frame. You can see, look, if I put the time frame down, they start to get closer to price, don't they? Okay, the four hour is now touched on to the to, to the hundred MA. Okay, so again, you can see minor support here. Okay, it's not the case that we're doing magical thinking. Okay, we're not saying right you're going to hit this moving average and the moving average is going to use its tentacle to flip the price away okay it doesn't really work like that it's simply a gauge all indicators are gauges built off data the data is the candles and you choose the input yourself you choose how many candles you want to come into there okay uh, there's a lot of people coming in don't forget to press the boost button on the left um just throw that in because I can see more people coming in as I go, so it's handy to do that. 
And we're just basically saying for today, general consensus, at least in my opinion, that you're going to come slightly lower and you may see a bounce at your first level of support. And lo and behold, okay, you know, or, or a bit lower, you might see a further one over here. You know, if you don't get the first or the second, I mean, that's why we DCA, because if you do come through level one, you'll get to level two. Level two provides a bounce back to level one. So you can often close out, not every time, you can often close out in a mitigated loss at least, or gains overall. Okay, then if you really space out, you're casting the net very wide. And then, of course, via my method, if you're in my academy, you can hedge to mitigate any further loss but you've just got to be careful because if you're buying things that are this high in value now you've got to understand the big lesson for today i think and i have said it is on my youtube etc but the big lesson for today is that you're going to come back to those moving averages at some point you can't hide okay there's nowhere to hide from it guys you've got to get there ultimately it's going to happen now in your longer time uh, term uh, time frames bit of a tongue twist, a longer term time frame. Um, you can see ideal support there where I've drawn. And you can see more of it there. And funnily enough, if you look here, that is where you had rejection even before this level formed. Okay, if you look at it there on my screen, it's very big, comes down, and then that level just happens to coincide with that one. It's not a coincidence. Okay, it's just how things work all right markets repeat not by magic they repeat because people use what they can see and they understand where you previously went long or previously went short i did actually do an analysis recently on the euro yen it's on my youtube and my trading view everywhere and i said as you come up to this high you can get contentious and you saw the price get absolutely wasted last time. So why would you be long now? You've seen it once already. You've had the chance. Okay. You're well off your moving averages. There is plenty of room for low. Okay. So you've just got to understand that that is exactly how these things work. When you have a high price, when you're well off your moving averages, it is time to change your bias. So that is exactly how the end pairs are, in my opinion.